Welcome. Okay. So I am so excited to be here. Like I said, I'm going to go fast and I will take all questions uh, at the end. I mean, if you have something really dire, but I, I just want to like get through this stuff. Um, so I'm calling this coaching systems. And this is based on um, basically over 10 years of me doing a lot of trial and error. Uh, I was a let's throw spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks kind of gal. And I just want to reduce the amount of time you're throwing spaghetti, especially if you're gluten free, because that is still expensive, that kind of spaghetti. So um just very quickly about me, not that it matters, but I am a full-time musician and I started getting asked to speak at conferences, music conferences about being a full-time composer and touring artist. And I really liked speaking. I already was a transformational growth, personal growth junkie. So I sort of went down a path of getting training in being a life coach and career coaching, even though that wasn't my intention as a career, but then speaking for other musicians, hearing a lot of the same problems, a lot of the same mental blocks, I realized that maybe I could put something together and start coaching. That was around 10 years ago. And ever since I've had, I've created email marketing courses and pitching a lot of communication stuff um, for specifically musicians and artists and have since started to expand my skill set as a coach to not just talk about marketing, um, but really dig into the personal element of coaching. So coaching has always been a side business for me. For the past three years, it has been a six-figure side business. Um, I am a big fan of scaling, meaning uh, creating a system once and then having it grow for me and not having to reinvent the wheel every time I hit a new level of growth. So I'm going to talk about that as well in this. So uh, a couple disclaimers. One, this is not the way to do this setup, your coaching business. This is my way that I have tried. This is probably my third like iteration. I call this like my coaching system 3.0. I'll tell you what 1.0 and 2.0 were. Um, and hopefully this will save you some time and give you some other options and insights into how you could potentially run yours. So this is not the uh, the ultimate um, end all be all, but this is just one way to do it that has been really working for me as someone who is a full-time artist and a coach and has programs and loves to travel and play with my dogs and do things with my husband. So I'm all about the freedom. The second thing uh, just to know is I use currently use the, the platforms. I'll share a bunch of the techie backend stuff, and I will share a link to where I ended up landing on the technology front. That link is a partner link, meaning there's no skin off your back. But when you sign up to even try it out with my link, I get paid from the company. And you also get a free coaching call from me if you end up going with the, the company that I am going to talk about. So um, just some disclaimers. So I am going to talk fast because there's a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to do some back end screen shares. Um, but I also have a presentation because I just think it's easier to sort of see some things as, as I'm because I'm talking quickly on the screen. So. I'm going to share my screen. Let me just get this set up. Um, I made a keynote, so you should see that. It's called Coaching Systems with Cheryl. And let me just get my chat box up in case y'all have. You, so I, one thing that I cannot do on Zoom calls is read chat. I'm like the slowest reader. So if you see me like uh, that's on me trying to see the chat box. So um, if I miss a question or something that you say, like type it again and again and again, I won't be offended. <laughs> offended. Can you all see coaching systems with Cheryl Beinglehart? Um, does someone type in the chat box? Yes, that would be amazing. And I will get going. Yay. All right. So here we go. I'm Cheryl Beinglehart. Hi, nice to see you. So the theme of this whole call here is less clicks, more clients. So that phrase is just like always in the back of my mind as I create these systems, less clicks, more clients. Clicks for them and clicks for us. The less clicking we have to do the the better, the more set up we will have been. I also really want to emphasize this idea of flow. What is the process that the client goes through from discovering us to getting to that first session? And what is our process of flow? So we are going to, in this call, follow the flow. All right. So this is how I'm structuring this. There are four things we're going to cover. First is the overview of what I mean by flow. I'm going to talk about the platforms that I have used and currently use that have worked for me. You will probably have heard of most of them. So a little bit of techie stuff. And then I'm going to talk about the flow for the client. And that includes the discovery, how they find us as a coach, their sign-up process, how the client pays for the coach, the onboarding process, which is how they prepare for the session and end up in the session. 
And then the last thing we'll talk about is the flow for the coach, how we can set it and forget it, aka your website, the payment stuff, the scheduler, all of that stuff. Client management, how do we remember who is who and how do we keep in touch with them and how do they continue to schedule with us? And then scaling this. And I'm going to tell you about a little experiment that I'm doing for this next month um, where I really lowered my prices just to make coaching really accessible for a very short amount of time. And I got 50 signups. So I have, uh, it's two, it's a hundred times a hundred, a hundred dollars for a hundred minutes. And I'm going to talk about how that's even manageable for me. So I have, uh, I got 50 people to sign up. So I have a hundred uh, 50 minute sessions for July scheduled, and I'm not worried about it. And I'm going to tell you why in that section. So let's start. So there's one, two, three, four. That's what we're doing today. Okay. Flow overview. Here we go. So to start with the flow overview, it makes sense for everyone to just like take a breath together. Cause I know my energy is like, whoa, cause I'm going to try to get all this stuff out. But also like, <sighs> That's kind of the energy we want for our client too. Like they, they're, they're handled, they are grounded with us. So my feet are on the ground. I'm feeling super grounded, even though I know there's a lot of buzzy energy because I love this stuff. I'm a dork about this stuff. So if you're feeling that buzzy energy, just know that I'm also grounded and I'm sending that to you. So if you ever feel like, oh my God, this is a lot. She's talking so fast. Take a breath and remember, there is a replay. I can watch it half speed. There is a replay. I can watch it half speed. Okay, cool. So let's first talk about the flow for the clients. Number of clicks. How many clicks does it take for the client to go from hearing your name, kind of being curious about you, to actually showing up to the call? The more clicks that they have, the less likely they'll end up at the call. So we want to reduce the number of clicks, the number of pages they have to go to, the number of platforms that they work on, all of that stuff. Big reason for this is the ease that they experience will translate to the representation of heck yeah. And what I mean by this is the easier it is for them to access you, go through your process, the more they're going to trust you, the more they're going to see that uh, that's going to translate to the rest of their life and the, the rest of their experience with you so that they're a continuous, heck yeah, I'm going to sign up for this. That makes sense? So we just want to make that, that front end client facing process super beautiful and smooth and all that stuff. The flow for the coach really is looking at the back end. What are the platforms used? How do we manage the clients so that we can really stay on top of that and, and serve them? Um, one thing I didn't put into this, but I do not send notes afterwards. Like that's a lot of work. And the notes that I take are for me and the notes the client might take and extrapolate and need for them are very different. So I let people take their own notes. I do not do a lot of work outside of showing up to these calls, which is probably the goal, right? But the biggest thing and the money word for all of this is automation. And this is, I'm just going to read this, less manual work, thus less time spent, this should be a T, means less burnout, which all leads to your own expansion and more clients and more focus on the clients. And when clients feel focused on, they're going to have results, they're going to help you grow your business, et cetera, et cetera. So automation is all about setting this up now. Um. Scratchy vocal? I don't understand why. That's okay. Um, automation. That's the, that's the number one thing here. Okay. So I want to first just talk about the platforms. Is Can everyone hear me? I mean, I can switch to my computer audio. It's not great, but okay, great. Thanks, Daniel. Um, here's my past platforms. So this is when I talked about my, uh, this is my system 3.0. I'm going to share with you my 2.0 system. I'm not even, even going to talk about my 1.0 because I think that that is, um, it's just not even automating. My system 1.0 was, uh, someone would talk to me, I would email them my pricing list, and then we would email back and forth. We would do a free call and then and all the scheduling to just get the free call over email or whatever. And then I would send them a document to sign. And then um, we would go back and forth to schedule when the next call would be. That's like manual, 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 like so many interactions per client. That was my 1.0. I am super not interested in that. So then I decided, okay, it's time to start automating and, and using some technology. So here's, here's what the, the flow for me looked like 
and I'm also going to share the platforms, all of the platforms that I've ever used and their their current average price, um, sort of the low end price, just so you can, we're just going to get real about all this stuff. Okay. Super transparent here. So I used to host, host my website on Wix and then Banzoogle and Squarespace. I uh, went back to Banzoogle and those were all around $28 a month to get more than just like the basic stuff. There's a payment processor. So when I was, my website was on Wix, I would send people to a pay, PayPal page. So they had to actually like log into PayPal. Then there was a link to the material. So I often had like course-like materials for coaching packages. I don't anymore. I do have courses that sometimes I'll, I'll grant access to for a coaching client if it seems relevant, but I would host those on Thinkific or Teachable is another platform. Um, those were around $29 a month for very, very basic um, features. And then I would connect the person to my email list. So sometimes people would sign up for stuff and I would also want to like market them a higher priced thing um, and add tags, but I would need to use Zapier because Zapier is an app that connects different platforms like Thinkific to MailChimp or your website to, you know, nothing was like really smooth. Um, so I used Zapier to connect and make like PayPal. I could tag someone if they purchased in PayPal, I could tag them via Zapier so they would get a tag inside of MailChimp, which leads me to my nurturing my email list, which is one of my biggest sources of, um, clients. I used constant contact, uh, very early on, like literally 20 years ago. And then I switched to MailChimp because of pricing and just sort of user interface. MailChimp changed a lot of their, um, their free level stuff. So you, you can't really automate or do much. Um, so to do anything that I want to do, it would be $65 a month. And then I moved on to Infusionsoft and I got really dorky with Infusionsoft, which is a CRM customer, customer relationship management and all the bells and whistles you can imagine. And that was $129 a month. Um, but I learned what was possible inside of email in using Infusionsoft. Then I would schedule calls and I started using Calendly um, in, in order to do anything that I really wanted to do. I did want two different calendars. And so I, I did have to pay for that $12 a month. And then I would have them fill out an assessment and a contract to upload. And I was using Airtable for that and also Google Docs, which is free. And then, of course, hosting the meeting on Zoom. And I want to go more than 40 minutes. So you're paying for the $15 a month. So all of that, if I was using Infusionsoft, was around $243 a month. When I was just using MailChimp, it was $179 a month. Cool. The number of different pages and platforms, aka the clicks that the client needed to go to from entry to the session was six. So you can figure that out, but that's that's kind of what that all looked like. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like now. So currently now, I use the platform Kajabi, which is an all-in-one, does it all. And I'm a big fan. So uh, I'm going to show you what this did for me. So I, it, my website, everything, any like link to any website is on Kajabi. The payment processor is set up through Kajabi. So they stay on the site. Um, the link to materials, it's all in Kajabi, whether or not they have any. Um, all my courses are now hosted inside of Kajabi. My email list is Kajabi. That's one of the things they started as was an email list. Uh, I add tags, I segment. I'm really a big fan of sending very segmented emails to a specific audience on my email list. My nurture and marketing emails and stuff, all that is Kajabi. I don't need to connect through Zapier. Um, I still use Calendly and I embed the code in my Kajabi pages. So they're technically not going to another site. They're actually, you're, I'm going to show you this. They're all inside of um, the Kajabi page that they get once they sign up. And the assessments and the contract upload, Kajabi. They have assessments inside of Kajabi and you can have a button that says download the contract. Um, I know that you can do DocuSign and other things that are that are easy too, but this, is, this has been working and I, I haven't had anyone have any issues with uploading a signed contract. So, and I, of course, still use Zoom. So now my monthly costs in, instead of 243 or even 179 are 146 a month because Kajabi, when you pay annually, uh, $119 a month is what that comes out to. So um, the different number of pages and uh, platforms that the client needs to go to from entry to the session are three instead of six. Cool. So that's why I like Kajabi, y'all, and everything. I mean, you can do this with a lot of different platforms. I'm going to be showing you the back end of my, my Kajabi. So that's cool. And if you're interested in Kajabi uh, and you're like, okay, I'm looking for this kind of platform, um, in the key.co slash Kajabi, I'll put in the chat box, is actually my link that gets you a free call with me if you end up going with them. But you get a, a couple weeks trial and you can just like test it out and be like, is this the thing for me? Soft. They like 
there you go. Um, okay, so just to summarize, before I was, this is Wix to PayPal to Thinkific, this was the flow of the client. Um, they didn't know that I use using Zapier to connect to Constant Contact, Conley, Airtable, Zoom, and now it's Kajabi, Conley, Zoom. Those are the three platforms that I work with, which is really beautiful when it comes down to how, where do I need to log in? What problem do I need to fix? What do I need to tweak? How can I optimize it? What data do I need to look at? I see all of the analytics and everything in one platform. So it's beautiful if you're a numbers dork. Okay, that was platforms. Let's go to client flow. So the flow of the client, now this is the front facing stuff. So the first thing is they have to discover the coach, right? If anyone was on yesterday's enrollment call, a lot of um, a lot of the discovery happened for, like for Christine on her podcast. So there are a lot of different ways and I will go through this a little bit um, in a second. But once they discover you, then they end up on your website if they're thinking about purchasing or working with you in some way. So we've got the coach website. Then there's the pick a package if you've got several packages or a discovery call, right? There's the next step. If they're going to work with you, there's the payment experience. And then there's the agreement and scheduling the first call, which can be very separate experiences or we can make them really smooth uh, and streamlined. Okay, cool. So just quickly, I'm not, I mean, this is not a marketing call at all. This is more systems, but just knowing in terms of discovering the call, these are the the ways that I've gotten discovered as a coach. Speaking opportunities were a really big one for me. Online summits. I'm a podcast guest often. Um, my email list is the number one place I get clients. And it's the reason I do not have to do any discovery calls. I do not do free calls. Um, there is a tiny place in, in my website in the frequently asked questions. It's like, what if I'm not sure? I offer a 15 minute call and an 80% uh, conversion rate from those calls to sign up. Mostly because people have gotten to know me through my emails, through the content and the value that I've already given them. And also my already existing clients, students, and members of my mastermind. I do have a mastermind called Amplify. It has around 200 members that I've been running for five years and uh, I'm looking to grow this year. But a lot of those people will want to dig in a little bit deeper for a short amount of time. And of course, social media, which everyone thinks is the number one way. But for me, it's definitely not. So that's, that's where people can see you at first before they end up ever getting to your website. So coach website, uh, I'm going to show you mine in a second. Um, on this page, there are certain elements, which I'll talk about in a second, but um, this is also where they can see what all of the packages are. I know there's a debate around, do I share my coaching prices or wait to get on a call um, for very, very high ticket things? Um, I see the value in not sharing the price right off the bat because maybe someone needs to have that enrollment call. Um, my packages don't go higher than $3,000 right now. Maybe that will change sooner, but um, I feel fine just sharing all of the options. And I think someone that gets to that point is going to be ready. Um, but, I, you know, there are a lot of different ways to do that. This is the way I do it. So picking a package, like I said, it's on the same page. The payment is as soon as they click, and I'm going to show you mine, and then all of this stuff is on the same page. The agreement, the schedule, the first call. And I know this is like the crux of why a lot of you are here, so I'm going to show this right now. So I am going to share my other screen. Let's see if I can just switch over. Share. Coaching site. Okay. You should be able to see me face it. And it says 100 by 100 coaching offers sold out. This is because this offer ended yesterday. And, and if people go to the offer now, they come here. Um, so that's normally not there. So you should see my coaching page as well. Love it. So I'm going to like real time talk. I haven't changed this page in like four years. This page is working for me. I tweak it every once in a while to like update the number of hours that I have training and blah, blah, blah. I say, what is it? It's no more drama. They could, if they're like, I know, they click on choose a package. It takes them right to the, the package section, which is at the bottom of the page. There's a little bit about me. Here's some frequently asked questions because this is all about them. It's like, me, 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 I want to know, is this for me? I don't give them my whole, like a ton of life story stuff. I've got some testimonials, um, what I guarantee is, and boom, here are my program options. I offer one clarity call a one hour session. I offer a package of five half hours. All of these are packages. And then I offer eight hour longs. This has, this is a payment plan or they can pay up uh, in full. Uh, I don't know if the chat box is blocking that. Hold on. I can't even move it. Um, 
they can pay in full and save thirteen percent apparently. So this is you know, and then there's more questions, more frequently asked questions. Like I really got them, you know, and and I go. I go big into my answers here. And here's the, can I talk to you first? Like this, yes, email me here and tell me these things, right? I rarely get a request to talk. And when I do, I'm happy to do it. So let's just say, okay, I want to do five half hour sessions. First of all, I'm a little different. um, And I think maybe because my audience is mostly musicians, although I have coached yoga instructors and climbing guides and other people, but um, musicians go on tour. I travel for my music. I didn't want to get locked into a monthly thing where it's like work with me for three months because if it's two calls a month and I want to go away for three weeks, then it's like they kind of get screwed. So for me, it's like they don't expire for the the coaching client. Most people use them within like four months. Um, But some some people just really need an accountability once a month and they want a half an hour check-in and they want work to do in between. And that gives a lot of freedom for me to say, hey, I'm going away for three weeks. I'm going to set you up really powerfully while I'm away. And when I come back, we'll hit the ground running and there's nothing around it. Like, wait, I'm supposed to have two coaching calls in a month. Like that's not interesting to me. So that's why I don't do monthly. So they just, it's a number of sessions and this has been working. And I changed my price. I up my prices for these very simple three, technically it's three packages, right? Three different options, one call, five, half hours or eight hours. And every year on my birthday, my prices go up significantly. So, um, so if you are someone here, this is what happens. You click on this package and it's a very simple checkout page. I created a code that's going to expire after this call. So don't bother trying to use it, but it's called coaching demo. So I don't have to pay $900 to myself. Um, that's hundred percent off. And now you can see what this looks like. Um, I already, an account already exists. Yes, yes, yes. Well, good thing. So when I click yes, uh, and I buy it, I end up on a, on a thank you page in the same window. So this is what they see. Success. Here's what's next. One, two, three. Sign my agreement. Fill out the intake form. Book your first call all on this page. They also get an automatic email that has this link in case they closed out by accident. So the first email says, congratulations. I'm excited to work with you. If you didn't go download the coaching agreement, fill out the form and book your first session, go back to this page. So this is cool. This is built on Kajabi. When I click download, this will take them to the page to download. It's an intentions and agreement. It doesn't look like a scary contract. It's like, here's my promise. Here's my intention as a coach. And here's what you agree to. I don't give refunds. You agree to get in communication if you get blocked. This is not therapy, all the disclaimers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So they download that, they sign it, and then they come back and they fill out this coaching intake form. They can see that there's 15 questions. I'm just going to really quickly go through. This is a, a assessment built in Kajabi. I'll show you why this is awesome in the back end. Describe a like It's all the like, what do you want, et cetera, et cetera. At some point, I'm just putting G in here. Um, fill in the blanks. Um, what do you want to provide for others? What are, you know, like we get an elevator pitch going right here. I, I really learn a lot about them. I am in tune with my finances. And then um, what resources do you have? Is there anything else you want me to know? Upload your agreement, upload file. I'm not going to be able to keep going unless I upload something. Um, and then it just says, thank you. And then they scroll down, book your first call. Boom here's my scheduler for this particular kind of call. And they get, you know, it's Calendly, right? So they can click here, pick a time, and then there you go. All right. So that is, let's see what else is back here. Um, One thing with Calendly, by the way, this is my inside Calendly. It connects with Zoom which is such a beautiful thing. I didn't, I realized this very recently. So anytime anyone books, it creates a new unique link, Zoom link. So you don't have to use your own Zoom room, which I was doing all the time. I just said in the email, use my Zoom. So anyway, that's cool. Connect your your Calendly to your Zoom and then you get automatic rooms created in your Zoom account. So love that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my little presentation um, and getting it back into the coach flow. So let's go back to... Coach Flo, how you guys doing? Everyone with me? Give me a yes. We are right on time. Is everyone still alive? Okay, good. I've done this before. It's gotten close, but I've never lost. I've never lost a, a person before. All right, so we're at the Coach Flow. Um, here we go. So that was the client flow front end. That's how it works for them, and then they just show up. 
right? By the way, that was all two pages. It was my coaching page. And then it was the thank you page. And everything they needed other than downloading the document was on lived on those two pages. And they got a nice reminder inside of their email, of course. And then all they need to do is show up to that calendar that they, or to that Zoom session that hopefully they put into their calendar or that Calendly prompted them to put in their calendar, right? Calendly does all that work for you. Love Calendly. So now let's talk about the other side of it. Okay. Ah, the other side, our side, the coach flow. So in order for them to find out about us, their discovery of us means that we've done some marketing, social media, ads, booking and speaking, email list, current clients and memberships, right? All those ways that I told you that we can get clients in. Then there's the website design. On my website, if you were to break it down, there's a little bit of, but not obvious in the language, I'm guessing you have this problem and here's a solution. Here's what coaching is as a solution. So you want a little problem solution and you want to to distinguish the benefits and the features. So the benefits is what are you going to get by working with a coach? And the features are, what does it look like? Is it a Zoom call? Is it eight? Like that's what the packages are, right? Those are the actual things that you get. Features is very important. I would say more important for courses. Like, is this a PDF? Is this 10 hours? Is this one hour? Um, I think it's a little bit obvious with coaching. It's like, okay, it's a call somehow. Um, And then of course your packages and everything that you want to present if you are sharing your prices. Again, I know that there's split thoughts on that. So you just do what you feel is comfortable. All right. Um, There's a connection to the payment processor. So I use Stripe and PayPal. I only use PayPal if it's a one-time thing, mostly because if someone were to buy a subscription or recurring payment, it's very easy for them to cancel on PayPal without you knowing about it. So they would still have access to your products. And so that's not interesting to me. I want to know what's happening with all of my clients. So I generally use Stripe and also Stripe's um, data and insights is super comprehensive. So why not have all of the payments coming through there? You can really look at your growth and numbers and stuff. So I'm moving away from PayPal, but I do know that it's an option people like. Uh, They sign in easily. It feels like there's money in the bank there. So I keep that as a uh, one-time payment option um, or people can pay with their credit card via Stripe. Um, there's the checkout page. So we saw that page as a front end user, uh, where I put in that discount code. And then there's the automated email upon purchase that they get automatically. And for me, that says the purchase went through and here's the page to go do all the things. And of course that page is the money page. I call it the money page, not because it's actually making money because you already got the money, but it's the money for me. Because it's, this is where all the manual work is normally done. This is where I see people manually sending emails, manually trying to go back and forth over text or email, trying to get a phone call or trying to get your first call in. So the, the time you save by having all this on one page, A, for you managing wise, it's so much easier. You save so much time. And therefore, you can make more money. That's why I call it my money page. And this is where, like you saw, the agreement scheduling and intake form happens. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the back end of my site um, and how that all that stuff works. So hold on, another sharing screen thing. Boop, 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 boop. All right, so we're hopping into my back end of Kajabi. So just really quick, you should see Kajabi, right? You should see a page that says Kajabi on the top left and pages. Okay, cool. So for those of you who don't know Kajabi, everything menus are on the left. If I were to click this Kajabi, you would see sort of overview analytics. It's really lovely. It shows you your like monthly income. If anyone has any comments in any of your programs, it's like a lovely dashboard. And then you've got website, which is where we actually design all these pages, the products. So these are my courses, um, anything that I would want to deliver or grant access to, to a client sales. And this is where we create offers, coupons, change our pricing. Marketing is all of the emails. People is where you manage the people and where you can create assessments uh, and quizzes and analytics goes into all of your analytics stuff. You can also create affiliate um, programs inside of Kajabi. I I left that out actually in the pricing to have an affiliate program in like ClickFunnels or something like that. It's like $200 extra a month. It comes with Kajabi. So uh, I can have other people pay for my products. I've had a $50,000 a month selling my email course because other people had an affiliate deal with me and sold my course for me. I was like, that's that's kind of cool. Um, 
So I want to just start very quickly on the landing page, uh, the back end of my coaching page. I'm going to click on coaching here. Again, menus and everything happens on the left, um, and it's pretty much click and drag and drop and things like that. So, for example, today I wanted to go change the little bit, um, what are the benefits of working with you inside here? So I click on this, and then when I want to edit the text here, so it says, are there benefits to working with you specifically? I knew that I had to update how many hours of coaching training I have. So I just go into here and I said, okay, yeah, I have over 950 hours and counting. So uh, this is just a text editor. And then I click save and that is, is done. Um, you can add all sorts of items inside its sections and then there's blocks in the section. So, you know, but in the section, I can add custom content. This is actually HTML. This is how I embed my calendar, um, which is really cool. Like the calendar from Calendly. You can add events that you can create, images, you know, all, all of the typical web de design things. It just makes it very easy. So now I want to go and show you the back end of the offers. So I go under sales and here we have offers. So I have a list of all my offers. It also shows who purchased them. So I'm just going to not show that just for privacy sake, because this will be a public video for people that want to watch it back. Um, but this is what you get here. You can uh, offer a product. So if someone purchased my golden key, that's the five half an hours. And I used to do this, but I used to also offer one of my pitching courses. So I would add product. And I can just grant them when they sign up for golden key, they also get access to whatever course I have. I don't do that here. So I'm not going to, you can tell them, uh, what landing page to go to once they purchase. So I need them to go to that. Thank you. Coaching page that I created the one that has all of the things, my money page. And I want to send them a very specific post purchase email. This looks very like texty, but it ends up showing up in my fonts and colors that I set in my, my overall branding. So I never have to go in and change my fonts and, and colors on the page. It's automatically set to my fonts and colors which is cool. And then I tag them. Um, don't worry about this Amplify thing. That's a little separate thing. I always tag my purchasers. It's nice to know who has purchased and who has not. There are a lot of statistics that show that anyone that has purchased from you, even a dollar element a item are more likely to put like 97% more likely to purchase from you later. So I like to know who my purchasers are. They're the people that I'm going to send higher ticket offers to, et cetera. And then, of course, I want to know who purchased my coaching products, especially if I'm saying, hey, I have coaching available. I don't want to send that to someone who has purchased my coaching because they're like, yeah, dude, I know. <laughs> Why? Don't tell me this. So I like to make sure that my um, I really segment my audience. I can change the price here. And I can also um, turn this into a draft if it's not available anymore. and we can go edit the checkout page. So I'm going to click here. Again, very simple editing here. The page content it looks a little weird here. I don't know why this is look weird, but I, I create a little like click here to agree. It's a very basic agreement, actually. It's I put everywhere that there are no refunds and that I agree to be coachable. Like I want people to kind of get in their head. I agree to be coachable. And they may not know what that means. And so I define that always in the in the longer uh, intentions and agreement form. It just means trying on ideas for the duration of our call and they can always get their old ideas back later. Okay, cool. So then I can take a look at this. Like, what does this look like once I change it? And then I click preview. Super simple. We don't need to get fancy with this checkout page because they already were like, yes, right? Sometimes I'm lazy and I don't create a, uh, like for my 100 times 100 deal that I'm doing, I didn't create a whole landing page. I just used this checkout page. I actually could show that to you. Um, www.inthekey.co. Oh, you know what? It's not going to work because it expired yesterday. It's going to take you to the My Coaching page, I bet. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, no. Yeah. So here, I, I wanted to do this little July promo where I'm making coaching super accessible for musicians. Normally, it's very expensive to work with me. So it's $100 for 100 minutes. Um, I booked it out. So this will actually expire the end of the day today, but I gave a little more details here and I didn't have to create a whole landing page. I did this in like a half an hour. I sent out one email to my list and in 24, uh, 48 hours ish, I had 50 sessions booked. Like, great, cool. Master hours handled for July. <laughs> also send wine. Cool. So let's see what else do I want to show you. Um, marketing. So we did went through website a little bit. Uh, not going to show you products because that's a whole different thing. Sales is where you 
you can do all the sales stuff and create these offers, marketing, email campaigns. So this is very simple. You can send out one-time email campaign campaigns. Like here's the email I sent to, um, to my whole list minus people that are already working with me. So, um, and y'all can see that I get really good open rates and really good click through rates and no one ever unsubscribes. Y'all, I'm really good at email. Um, so you can click a new email campaign, make it a broadcast or make it a sequence. Uh, sequence meaning something that is sent to them over time. You set it up once and it's automated. So I have a welcome series. So anyone that signs up for anything free from me, they get that free thing and then they get into a welcome series where I introduce myself. I, I give some free content. Um, I give them a really amazing like organizational like research guide as a musician. It's like, how do I keep track of the Spotify playlists I'm on? Blah, blah, blah. So I give them a resource. They start to really feel loved on in that welcome series. And then I send some nurture series, meaning like more cool content, stories about me, connection point stuff. And what I call rise series, rise, meaning taking them from just a subscriber to a customer because until they buy they're just subscribers they're not fans they're not I'm interested in in the sales right I am not weird about sales <laughs> so I have these rise series to rise them through that customer journey and then I have a nurture series so basically like someone signs up there they're basically taken care of for like six months of content so if I got kidnapped by aliens like this is all ready to go all ready to go and people are still get engagement from me even if you know the aliens said no so the last thing I'm going to show you is inside the people here. I'm on the left side of the, the menu again. I'm not going to click on people because it shows people's emails right away, but you see my whole entire list and I can search that by who's purchased something, who has what tag. Like it is as searchable as you could possibly want as searchable things get. This is assessments. I, I created a duplicate of this because um, this is the intake form that people fill out when they want to coach with me. And you can go in and edit the questions. So these are all the questions here. There's 15 questions and I, it's intended. And I tell them that it is a real self-reflection to take time with this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's, you can lay them out in different ways, multiple choice, all sorts of things here. The cool thing about this is you can look at all the results. Like I said, I just made a test one here so that you can see me and I didn't, wouldn't show anyone anyone's personal info. Um, you could grade them inside of products. People use these as like quizzes, uh, fun sort of gamification stuff you can use assessments for. Pass doesn't mean anything when it's an assessment like this. So I ignore these two. If I were to just click on my email, I could see all of my answers. Remember I typed in the HHH. And if I were to click on the person's name, test client being the name here, this is, this is like the money stuff here. So this is the client. I can see everything. I can see all of the tags. I clearly test all of my stuff here. I can see the results right here of that coaching intake form. I can see any purchases they've made, any other additional info. I can see what products they have. If, if I had a product, I would click view. I could see the progress I've made. I've done 25% of it, or I've done 50% of it, you know? And when I have sessions, this is where I take notes. Note, the client does never sees this. Note about me. Cool. And maybe the session two, I can keep it in one note. So if I go away and come back, session, session number two is here. Or I can say add notes, which would make sense. And you can see the different days here, right? I used to take, so here's my 1.0. I used to take notes in a notebook and I'd have tabs with people's names and that notebook got filled really quickly. My 2.0 that I did for about a year is I would just always use my own Zoom and then I would schedule people the last two minutes of every session, I would schedule the next session and I would take notes inside my calendar, iCal notes section. So I would just be looking at my calendar anytime. My calendar is always open. Like I am so related to my calendar, which is why I feel like I have a lot of time because we just, we just jive me and my calendar. Uh, and only recently when I started really scaling and getting more clients and learned that Zoom can automatically create a new Zoom link. I knew I couldn't take notes inside of that because they see that they, we share that, that calendar link, right? That Calendly link. So now I'm like in love with the fact I discovered this notes here because I'm Kajabi's always open for me. I'm always tweaking something. It's because everything lives inside here. I'm always logged in. So it's so easy to just say, Oh, I have a session with, um, web at CBE music today. I don't even need to type in the whole thing. I just go search for web at CBE. Hopefully I'm the only one that comes up and yeah, there I am. I click on me and then I can get right into, this is a little summary and I can get right into back into that window. 
Cool. All right. Um, I think that I'm almost done with all of this stuff and I'm going to just finish up by going back to my keynote, if I can do that. And then I got y'all for Q&As. Y'all, first of all, I am so on time. Oh, mm. did not have to go that fast. Did not have to go that fast. Um, all right, so we're gonna play this. Coach Flow, wait, 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 we did this. We did this already. I just did the demo. Okay, inside sessions. So I also showed this as well. How to remember and manage your clients is super duper important. Um, you don't want to forget people. And sometimes I feel like clients, for, they're like, oh, remember that time I told you? I'm like, yeah, I take notes on you. I got you. I remember you. <laughs> so note taking is huge. So like I said, notebook, iCal, and now Kajabi. Okay, so I did this already. Love that. Let's talk about scaling. So going from that one or two clients, you could have any system with one or two clients, anything. You could manually do all of this stuff and it won't feel crazy overwhelming. As soon as I started getting five clients a month, which is where I sort of maxed out in order to leave time to create the music that I do and to stay relevant in the music industry so I could get the speaking gigs that would get me clients. It was all about making sure that I didn't get too many clients. So I also needed a way to scale and save time. And now that I'm doing... 50 clients in July, I was like, let's see if this system works. And I went through all of this and optimized this as soon as I decided I wanted to do this call. And I was like, it's scalable. Cool. <laughs> I can do this with 50 people. So automation is key. All of those systems set up. I just said, here's, here's the link to buy this package if you want it. Cool. And now I'll just show up at the calls. I'm not doing any work. Two minutes before the call, I will read through their answers from that, from that form. Right. Like I will consume that material, but I'm not going to do it until right before. That's why the sessions are 50 minutes. So I could book them on the hour regularly, but I have a 10 minute buffer. Um, so yeah, automation. Note taking in one place is so important. The notebook was not working for me. iCal was good because I always have my calendar open, but I was like, what else, what else do I always have open? The only other platform I always have open is Kajabi. So that was genius. I'm excited about that. And by the way, I literally just started that last week. So um, planning for the scale. Like I said, I, I knew in the beginning of this year that I would, I wanted to do this experiment in July to see a, who was really interested in coaching, but wasn't at a price point that it worked for them. Could I make it really accessible? B, can I try out some of the new coaching things that I'm learning in a way that feels good, but they have something at stake. Like I'm not doing this for the money this particular month. I'm doing it. I'm charging so that they have something at stake, which is why I don't, I've never done free free discovery calls. Um, the no-show rates was like through the roof, uh, clarity calls, whatever you want to call them. Um, when there's something at stake, even if it's a little bit, and they've already gone through the motion of taking out their credit card and paying you, that motion has become taught and a little bit easier and normalized a little bit. So I think that's a really great gate. And of course, I'm going to try to get some of these 50 people to become longer term, higher ticket coaching clients at the end. Um, I schedule rest and self-care. I only scheduled Monday through Thursday I uh, for July for this crazy 100 by 100 coaching month that I'm taking on. Um, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday, off. I have two commission. Like I write music for social justice choirs. I have two commissions to write. I'm going to do those on the weekends. But most of the time, I am like self-care. When it's not July, I only do coaching from 12 to 5, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I, I work three days a week on calls and any other music business related calls are in the mornings on those days. I literally work three days a week. So that's cool. And I schedule that. I'm really, really intentional about scheduling that. It's taken me a while. The people pleaser in me was like, sure, let's do a call Saturday night at eight o'clock. Like, no, no, had to draw those lines. Regularly growing my email list has been huge, huge, huge. And having such an easy time to anytime I say I need some clients, extra clients, I can send one email and it's done like done because of my email list and I'm regularly increasing my prices and not being weird about it. When you're weird about it, they can tell they're being weird about it. Right. Did I just lose the screen? No. Okay, cool. Um, last thing that I'll say about the whole tech of everything is the best platform is the one you know and love and trust. No matter what platform you're using, dig in, watch the videos, do the free calls with the platform, like get a co like learn that platform and don't, ha don't have the mindset of when my list grows, I'll switch platforms. Like 
screw that. It takes a lot to set up a platform the right way. Why would you want, why would you ever do it with the intention of doing it again? <laughs> like, especially if you don't love the tech stuff, like, no, 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 no. Set yourself up for like long-term sustainability and never having to touch this stuff again. Like gag barf trying to do, like, I would, ne I'll never switch mostly because it's like moving. It's like, yes, let's go buy this house and move in here, but we'll probably buy another house and move later. Um, I, which is like a plan. I know some people plan like that. So maybe that's not a great example, but like also when we, we moved into this house, we were like, we're literally leaving everything here. If we ever move again, we're taking our toothbrushes. Moving is the worst <laughs> transitions. I don't like transitions. So that's just, that's just for me. So love on the platform, love the one you got, love the one you got, or set yourself up to love the one you got, you know? Um, Thank you. Okay, apparently I'm done. Uh, I'm going to stop the share and come, come on in. I did it under an hour. Yay. So I see there are some questions in the chat box. I'm going to take a hot moment to read them. I'm a very slow reader. So just like, you know, pause with me, y'all. Take a breath, grab some drinks, um, check out, you know, anyone who might be shirtless and just kind of love on that. And can they come back to the assessment if they don't have time in that moment after purchasing? Yes, they can come back to the website. I do have a note in it that says if you start it, you can't go back. That's something I'm working on coding. Um, it's, it would be a custom code thing. It's the only thing I'm like, ooh. Um, but they can always come back to that page and start it again because it, it went to their email. So they have that link and they can say, cool, I see that this is 15 questions. And I say, this will take a little while. Make sure you have time to really dig in. And I set them up to like starts because once they start, then they're going to want to go through it. But that's a great question. Thanks, Mary. Um, is there a front end for clients? Like one-on-one -on -one coaching portal where they can watch the recording of the session or any homework. Oh, got it. So uh, that's a product inside of Kajabi, right? So I made the very um, intentional decision to not record sessions, um, to not give written homework. Every session ends with something to do an assignment. That's one of the reasons why the, the five half hours really works for people because it, and I choose assignments that if they, and when they do them, they will be in a new place by the next time we talk, they will have new results in their life. So that changes client to client. So for me to then go say, yeah, I'll make a really pretty PDF when they could have just jotted it down in their notebook. Um, so I don't do any one-on-one -on -one coaching portal. It sounds like a lot of extra work that I'm not interested in doing, but maybe you do, or maybe you give them access to a program. Like I have done that where I'm like, Hey, you're totally working on outreach and fan engagement and your avatar and stuff. Like my email course would be a really great add on for this. So I'm going to give you access to this because you bought my highest ticket coaching program or something like that. Like I'll do that every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I, I assume always that I also don't send email reminders. I either allow Calendly to do that, but I also say, Hey, like I assume the best version of you as a coach. So the best version of you has integrity is responsible for their calendar. And it's really good data. If they miss stuff, if they forgot what their homework was, blah, blah, blah. Like that's very good information. Like, cool. Let's talk about that, you know? So there's a lot of workflow stuff that I, I, you can extrapolate from not spoon feeding everything to a client. At least that's how I work with my musician clients. Again, your clientele base may totally need that. And this is just how I do it. Not necessarily how everyone should, but that's a good question. Um, have you had a client that didn't know how to sign the agreement since it's in PDF format when it's downloaded? No, I, and I know that DocuSign is a way to make that like really, really dummy proof. Um, I've never had someone not know to just double click it and like add in a signature, which you can do easily now on uh, preview. You don't need Adobe anymore. Um, like computers have made this very easy for PDFs to be signable. So I have, in all of my years of coaching, I haven't had one person not know how to do that, which I'm actually surprised by. I feel like it could be a block, but it hasn't been. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I haven't, you know, done anything else. I do have a like right click on the thing if you need, you know, sort of thing. Do you type notes directly in while coaching or write notes after the call? I usually write notes after just like really quick notes um, after the call or while they're talking. Um, if it's very obvious, like, ah, uh, there's this if an and conversation versus or I'll just write like and versus or. Um, so I, I try to really keep the coaching container. Like when we hang up, I try to hang up 
and like be done. Um, so normally like if they're like looking at their calendar for what time works, I'll type the notes then. Like I'm, I'm really utilizing my time on the call with them for me and for them. So, uh, but that's a good question. I would say mostly during the call. Yeah. Daniel says moving sucks. Oh, it does. I'm sorry. You're doing it now. Mary says, if you don't want to share pricing and you want to, uh, to screen potential longer term clients to make sure they're a fit for you, would you just offer a discovery product, um, paid and then when they enroll the product to Kajabi account. Yeah, totally. So, um, so what you could do is say like, Hey, here's a, a 30 minute call for $30, right? If you, if you don't want to do the free thing. And I do see the value, especially starting out and you don't have an, uh, an email list or an audience that has been able to get to know you in other ways. Um, it does make sense to get on a call and sort of see if they vibe with you. Like people on my email list, like they, I send them videos, I send them blog posts, I send them, like they know I talk fast. They know I'm kind of like, let's just get to it. Like they, they got my energy. Right. And if that they'll, they'll know, which is why I don't do a lot of those calls, but I totally get that a discovery call in the beginning may work. If you do want to see, Hey, are they a paying client? And are like, what's a really low ticket price, low price thing, like a dollar a minute. I'm a big fan of a dollar a minute, like $30 for, for a 30 minute session. Um, you know, mini breakthrough plus let, let's see if we'll work together. Well, if that feels good for you, you could do that too. And yes, so that would be, that wouldn't necessarily be an, a product in Kajabi. That would just be an offer. So you don't need to create a backend access to some big product. It would just be an offer. They pay for that thing. And then if they decide to work with you and, and up level to another coaching package, you would just send them to that offer link. Um, you, no need to send them to a landing page, a sales page, essentially. If you've already sold them, you want to send them directly to that checkout page, which is cool. In Kajabi, you can get that direct link and just email them like, hey, here's here's the direct link to the package we talked about. You can also send a direct link with a coupon applied so they don't need to remember the coupon. Um, but yeah, you're basically talking about two different offers there. That's a good question. Can you share which website theme you used on Kajabi? It looks super clean. Thank you. I don't remember. I usually use whatever, like they update the theme and they're like, here's the newest theme. It's all so super cu customizable that I'm probably just using the most recent one. Um, yes, Heidi. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you like it. Did I need a website or just a landing page? These are the same. Great question. Uh, I use the word landing page and Kajabi does as well as like a one-off page. Um, I do have a website. My overall umbrella for my coaching and my sort of marketing stuff is in the key of success. So if you go to in the key of success.com, it kind of, it's a mess right now, but it's like, it's got all the things I offer, including my membership and the, blah, 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 all the stuff. I'm, I'm in the process of, of really streamlining that. So, I mean, go there at your own risk. Um, but the landing page for coaching, I, I create short links for everything in the key.co slash coach. And I just send people to that. You know, I don't need them to go explore my email marketing products. If we had a conversation at a live summit about working one-on-one -on -one together, like, so I love landing pages. I mean, this is also, it, it, you can get there from my main website, but they're kind of one in the same. And at the same time, I think I, I get what you're asking. Like this is a, just a one-off landing page specifically for coaching. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Let me know. Um, did I create the website myself? I did. Thank you. Um, it is it is very user friendly. I think it's easier than Wix. It's definitely easier than Squarespace. Um, and you don't need to code. Uh, the most coding I do is when I go to Calendly and I say embed calendar and it like gives you all the code and I copy that and then I create a code section on my Kajabi website and I go paste, paste that mess of code. That's like as much coding as I do. Um, Eddie says, how simple is it to set this stuff up through Kajabi? Very. Um, if you give my link a try, we actually like set it up together, like whatever you need. Kajabi also, if you ask for it, this is insider scoop. If you ask for it, you email Kajabi as soon as you sign up, they give you a free setup call too. everybody. Very cool. Um, you can hear that you've heard that Kajabi can be really complicated. Oh gosh. No, it's like, here's the thing that, that feels complicated with Kajabi is that it's all the things in one. So I think it depends on how your brain works. For, for me, for a while, I thought, okay, let's compartmentalize. I was a compartmentalizer, like courses go to Thinkific and then email is in Infusionsoft. And then we connect them with Zapier and I have all the different things, but here's the thing. When one thing goes wrong, with one of those sites, then everything else can't work because you can't find the source of what's wrong. Um, 
or you have some code weird here or some link is broken here. And also there's mild, very subtle branding things that are different for each site. Like you can get almost all your fonts in Thinkific, but then they have their little orange thing or, or almost all the things in Infusion. Like, and so there's this level of like, it doesn't feel quite put together. And I'm interested in my clients feeling like everything is handled and aligned in one with me. So if you're a com compartmentalizer and you want to see all the things separate, like I get why Kajabi would sound uh, complicated. I think it's very simple. Like everything was on the left there, like the website stuff, the products, the sales, the people. I like, you saw pretty much most of it. There's a lot of other stuff I can do. I didn't get into affiliates. I didn't get into products, but like, I, I mean, I am techie. I can't say I'm not techie. I am techie. And I've seen all the techie things and I know all the bells and whistles and all the different ways you can get really complicated with it. And I was going to that extreme to get super fancy. And I, I had to pull it back. I was taking so much time getting overly fancy and it wasn't serving anybody. It was not serving me. And it was definitely not like my clients didn't care. In fact, I think it was harder for them. So yeah, I would, I would argue that till the cows came home that it's complicated. Um, yeah, cool. I hope I, I hope I answered that Eddie. Um, Oh, look, we've got a, I, I managed to build on Kajabi. I'm so sore Chakawa. I don't know how to say that, say that name. Um, and you're technically challenged. So anyone could do it. Love it. Jamie says, I love the flexibility of how you structure a package. Do you have an expiration date with a package so that they don't sit on it and cash in five years from now? I, I actually don't. Uh, I tested this for a while and I was a little nervous. I'm like, someone's going to buy and then never use. Um, I have clients that love the half hour check-in and, and I know that like, Coaching is different. And I've heard Preston say this. Um, the coaching is different than therapy. You don't want to talk for 18 years straight. You want them to get results in and out. That's what my eight-hour package definitely does. And I rarely have people re-up the eight-hour package. A lot of them go to the monthly check-in because they like the accountability and the new ideas and the energy of the half-hour packages. So it's a little less, I mean, yes, there's coaching there, um, but those people that are sort of long-term check-ins, uh, they go on tour in the summer. They're not available. They've got what they've got to do for the summer. And then they're like, let's come in the fall. Um, they know that I up my prices every February. I have two people that will buy like three prices, three packages of five, and we don't get to them until the end of the year. <laughs> um, but at the same time, they're good clients and they know not to be that way uh, in, in that they're not using them for five years. So um, I haven't had a problem with it. Um, I might need to change that if this scaling thing, you know, like who knows, but it is, I think that the, like, I'm afraid they're going to like take advantage of me. I think that's a scarcity conversation and I really have to be aware of my own scarcity conversations. They come in and they take over, which is why I'm hyper aware of them. So for me to say, I'm worried that they're going to take advantage of me by not, by buying a package and cash in in five years is, is me just having this like doomsday scarcity conversation. So I'm just living in that. They're so excited. They're going to get started tomorrow. And that's usually what happens. Um, but it, I mean, it's a great, it's a real, very real thought. So, um, my website link. Okay. So my website to the coaching was just, here's my short link. Cause I can type this coach. Um, and then if you are like, okay, Kajabi is kind of interesting. You get a free trial. Like you, I don't even think you need to put a credit card in. That's my link. If you use my link, I very much appreciate it. And, um, you get a, an extra free call with me and I will literally like go in and set things up with you. And let's see, do I see any value in utilizing Kajabi before you have a website up? All oh, great question. I'm curious if there's value to have use it at your early stages i.e. pre-website. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you need much more than a landing page for coaching. Like on your coaching page, you can say, Hey, I've been featured in this magazine and on this podcast. Like you, you could have a whole press page and a whole, you know, products page. Like you could do the whole website thing with the drop down menu and blah, 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 blah. Um, or you can create one page and they, they have really beautiful templates too, by the way, like I create mine from scratch, but like you could just change your face and your name and like, boom, it's done. I mean, you could create a landing page in a half an hour for your business um, and not have to do the whole website build thing. So I'm a big fan of like doing the minimum amount of work if you haven't gotten that by now. Like what corners can we cut? I am inherently lazy. Mm. But I do think that there is value in starting Kajabi, especially because your email list is your most important thing. And the number one thing on social media for me is like get people into my email list, get people into my email list. So if you don't have somewhere for them to go, you're that's a problem, first of all. Second of all, 
people are 130% more likely to purchase from you via one email versus nine social media posts. So do you like that? I have like all these random facts in my head. Dork. I told you I'm a dork with a capital D. Um, so I do think that there is a lot of value in utilizing Kajabi. The other thing is, you know, you're like, oh, I could pay $30 a month for this. I, I did the math for you already, right? You could be paying a little bit less than you are for Kajabi and set yourself up and then have to re set yourself up later. But there's also a nice little fire under your butt. If you start paying $119 a month for something, you're like, game on, let's go make that $119 back in two sessions or one session or a half of a session. Like, you know, so it's, it's good motivation in my mind. So, um, yeah, I think if you're in the early stages and you know, this is what you're up to, like, I would say go for it, Heidi. Yeah. Can you set up landing pages in person for in-person things on Kajabi too? live events and such. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, totally. Yeah. It's, it's another offer. And if there's materials or anything they need, you can create that inside. You can also create a community, by the way, like there's comments and stuff and people can get to know each other inside that product. Um, that's a whole other thing I didn't even talk about, but, uh, I use it for my membership and it's really, really cool to see people's comments right when you log on to Kajabi into the dashboard, it says, here's some comments and you can just reply to those and, and no matter what product they're in. Um, so if you're doing a live thing, absolutely. You can create events and countdowns. And as soon as the event, uh, the sales for the event is over, it can, you can redirect to another page. All that fancy stuff is easy, super easy to set up there. Um, okay. Can you drop your Kajabi link in the Facebook post when you post the replay? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, even if you just click on it now and then close the window, it remembers your computer. Creepy, right? Oh, uh, so creepy. And you can also sign up and then like within a month, be, like write them and say, hey, I want a free call with Cheryl. Sign me up to her account. So it doesn't matter. What template did I use to build your website? I built it from scratch because it's super easy. Just section block. Um, I totally need to learn about email lists from you. Oh, I... There's no, there's no one more dorkier than Cheryl email dork. Um, okay. So I think that's everything. Really great questions. Um, this will be available as a replay so you can watch it half speed back. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to reach out. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, reminder of the disclosure in the beginning, this is just one way to do it. This is how I do it and it's worked. And I continue to tweak it. Like I said, Last week, I was like, I'm going to take notes in Kajabi instead of iCal um, for, for during coaching sessions. And that's working really well. I'm constantly optimizing. So I'm always interested to hear how you all, you know, other people, other coaches do stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to go on this journey with you. And thank you so much for being here and, and creating space for, for me to buzz around. So if ever, okay, so I know my energy is like next level high buzzy. So let's all like ground for a second, like take feet on the ground and take a big breath together. <sighs> so if there's like a lot of inspiration, cool. If there's a little overwhelm of like, there's a lot of shit to do, got it. There's like, all right, I see what's possible. I'm going to work on this in my own pace. Hang out there. Love that. Um, there, whatever is in between. There's a whole, there's probably a whole spectrum of stuff going on. So let's do, let's do a two word check-in just cause I'm curious before we pop off two words. What's, what's happening. Done. Loving it. I'll take those <laughs> motivated and excited. Love it excited and ready. Okay, cool. Inspired and serious. Okay. Need house. Okay. Got it. Oh, you're moving. That's a moving person. Okay. <laughs> LOL. Uh, calm and invigorated. Oh, guys, my husband's is proud and grateful. Oh, lovely silence. Ease and flow. Yay. Okay. Empowered and weekend. Yes. Weekend. Love that. All right excited and appreciative. I am so appreciative of you all. I will see you in the group. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. All right. I'm going to keep reading these though. Grateful and comfortable in a good way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss, you're so welcome. Inspired, grateful, inspired, overwhelmed. Totally got that, Olga. Totally got it. Yay. All right, all. I'm going to peace out. Thanks.